Okay guys, a little bit more, uh, still heading northeast toward this uh, nuclear base, ex-nuclear base, um, hidden away in the forest. So yeah, as you can see here, it's, um, it's not much change, this is It's uh, forest and road. This is um, this is Latvia. Everyone, everyone was saying it's a forest country, so yeah, and they're correct. Which is nice. Like I said, for me, I, I don't mind it at all. It's either you're going to be driving through this or driving through mountains or you drive through flat plains or desert so take your pick I'd much prefer to be driving through nice green uh, forest hey guys I'm about uh, exactly 50 kilometers from this di um, disused ex-soviet uh, nuclear missile site uh, it's hidden away in the forest and I'm heading toward so yeah I've got about 35 40 minutes to go according to G maps and um, yeah the roads smaller and smaller so I got off the A2 so you sort of uh, if you're ever heading this way you stick on the A2 from Riga and for about 120 kilometers I'm now on the, the P27 and then I'm going to take the P34 Yeah, so the roads are smaller. This is real logging country out here. I think there's a lot of logging trucks, a lot of uh, timber being carried. Um, it's a little bit more farming land here, but it's still, yeah, it's still populated by forests. You know, it's just forest everywhere. Um, so, Ulbenas Novads. So I've got a bit of clear air now, that guy's turned, which is good. So yeah, I'm sort of thinking that once I get off the P27 onto this P34, when I was in Lithuania, driving out to Ignalina, Chernobyl's uh, sister nuclear site, you get to a point you start to feel like, yeah, look, probably when the site was active in the communist days, you know, maybe you get noticed if you're not meant to be around there or you're just not allowed down the roads. I, I wasn't quite sure, but I did have people in the comments say, no, no, even in the even in the communist days, you could drive to the site, uh, it wasn't an issue, you know, so I think I had someone say their grandfather used to work there or something. But I'm, I'm absolutely certain in these backwoods of the forest of Latvia, a Soviet missile site, with actual ballistic missiles, medium range ballistic um, intercontinental missiles, I would say that there was definitely be an exclusion zone around the base, or there would have been. And you just, certain roads you just weren't allowed down um, unless you meant to be at the base. Or if you did mistakenly go down the road, you would be stopped and you know, better have a pretty good reason why you want to be down there. So I've no doubt that would have been the case. I, I don't think anybody in those days, uh, in the Cold War times, would have just been allowed to drive up to a, a Soviet nuclear site, especially a missile site. And given that it was meant, it was secret. I mean, it was a secret base. Um, from everything I've read, um, many Latvians just didn't know the base existed on their own soil. So yeah, um, 18 k's to go on the P27, and then I get onto the P34, and then from what I saw on Google Maps, the yeah the road to the silos itself or the base itself, yeah it's just like a small uh, concrete road, which is very characteristic of roads to bases in those days. I just left uh, the second other secondary road. I'm now on what they call the P34. And then I swap again to the P44. Uh, so we're stepping down 
road to road to road. So this is, yeah, this is real traditional farmland out here. Lit literally, this is the middle of, this is far north east um, Latvia. So this is not on the beaten path, like I'm just, this is driving to this hidden nuclear base. And so this is a, you know, this is a proper little town in in remote rural Latvia, you know, it's not on, like I said, it's not on the beat. So I don't know if this would have been um, the, the main town before the base. I don't know if that would have been a restricted town, like um, a lot of towns were in Soviet times. They were just closed cities or closed towns. You just weren't allowed in there unless you had a permit or you lived there because the town the closed towns normally supported something I either supported a nuclear base a nuclear power site uh, science and development you know uh, shipbuilding that sort of thing that was state you know class of state secrets so you know they were closed site closed towns Definitely nice, beautiful sort of traditional uh, farmhouses and things here. So yeah, I'm not sure if this main town um, would have been closed or not. Uh, not sure, but you know, this is literally 20 kilometres from the missile site now. So you would start to think that you know, 20 kilometre radius from the site, probably you know, a lot of control, a lot of observation at least people on the lookout patrolling and get and record from this point on so about 6k's from the actual missile site um, and as you can see I, I definitely think from under 10k's or from 10k's around the site they probably had some kind of you know exclusion area or at least know anywhere within this 5k radius if you lived here you were meant to live here and you know you probably supported the base or something or, um, yeah because there's just nothing there's nothing here within this radius now from the base um, this is a um, uh, it is a municipality here so I think it's Alukshne or Alukshne um, I'll wait till the next sign but there's nothing here like there's no not many cars at all I've seen one car I think in the last 10 kilometers one parked back there on the side of the road um, there should be a turn off 2k's up the road to the next the last uh, road which is the P44 but as you can see this is just so that's where I'm tracking at the moment As you can see, yeah, it's just this is the real, real backwaters, real backwaters in Latvia. All right, so there is signage here, so I think. Um, It, it is it is popular here there are quite a few quite a few tourists that come to this site it is a popular site but I dare say this would have been the original road this would have been the original road to the base and like I was saying I, I think you just wouldn't come down this road you wouldn't come down this road unless you meant to be here Okay, so here we go. I saw this on Google Maps. <clears throat> so this is the entry. This is the entry to the base. Yeah, this is the actual. This would have been the checkpoint. So, you know, you didn't get past this point unless you meant to, meant to be here. So disused guardhouse. the odd 
car down here that's two cars that have come past because it is a like I said it is a it is a tourist spot so this is barrack buildings so these would have been these I'm assuming would have been the barracks for the soldiers Sign still with. I don't know what that means, but somebody can maybe tell me what that timber stuff going on to the left. But yeah, certainly out on the right here, these are all the old. These are all the old uh, buildings from the base itself. So this really so. is in the. Pretty, it's pretty awesome to think, you know, even despite the presence of a modern operation like the logging and that on this site, this was the road to a secret nuclear ballistic missile site of the former Soviet Union, which is pretty cool to think, you know, people drove down here daily, you know, going to the silos to go sit in the control room and monitor the missiles and wait for that, wait for that call to come saying, you know, time to launch well, I didn't realize the timber operation here was so advanced because I've seen I had a look around here on Google Maps before I came I didn't see as all this timber around here <clears throat> so there's um there's some kind of bunker through there look I have no doubt there's all kinds of stuff you know they said there's all kind you know there's tunnel systems there's all kinds of things around here turn right then your destination will be on the left I'm just driving around on a driving right up and around a disused uh, nuclear ex-soviet nuclear site There we go. So there's one of the main bunkers down there. In 500 meters, turn right. So I'm going to get out and have a look around. But yeah, guess what we see up here, guys? This is what I came to find. Lennon's head. Your destination is on the right. Okay, shut up, Google Maps. For now, I'm going to need you to get back, of course. But okay. So this is the Lennon's head. It was apparently moved. It was moved to preserve it because people were worried it was going to be um, people were worried it was going to be uh, salvaged or destroyed, so it was somewhere else and it got moved. But yeah, pretty cool. That's what I came to see. So I'm going to jump out and uh, jump out and get some pictures and have a look. So here we go guys, Lenin's head up close at the um, the Soviet, uh, ex-Soviet ballistic missile base tucked away in the northeastern forests of Latvia. So I think I said in the earlier video, this was salvaged from another part of the base and was brought here and put on top of, there's something significant about that thing that it's sitting on, I don't know whether, it, I don't think it was actually a hatch, but yeah, there's something significant about this part of the base so yeah that's what it um so he's here it's a really solid object made out of solid granite i just touched it it's absolutely solid and this i have to go back and read later what this means or translate it So yeah, interesting. But yeah, this is all part of the ballistic missile base. So all these paths, uh, you can see a silo down there. Uh, so whether that, you know, whatever that stored, whether it was stored equipment for the missiles, missiles themselves. I, I, 
<clears throat> yeah, so they didn't carry spare missile and ballistic missiles on a ballistic base. They normally just put them in the launchers in the tubes and and that's it. But there's all these paths around here. Um, and you know they, they recommend if you come here, you come with somebody like an Urbexer and just have a look on YouTube or um, Google, find someone that actually knows the base. And I think this was another Lennon, but looks like it. It's characteristic holding his jacket with his hand across, but yeah, he's minus his head. And I doubt, I doubt that that head was sitting on top of this. So I think this is from something else, but it's part of the structure here. Look, there's a lot of people come here, so a lot of urbexes and things and I saw a couple of cars on the way in. So yeah, there is a lot of graffiti and uh, a lot of graffiti and stuff. So I'd say you come here with someone that knows the place. I'm not going to go too far because I didn't expect uh, the weather. It's really been raining, pouring with rain. But you can see funnels up there so yeah actually I'll just look I'll just go a little bit down this way yeah didn't really bring hiking shoes or anything so but I'll come this way just have a look see what's around the end of this uh, footpath Here we go, another silo. And I dare say there's things all the way down through here. Some animal tracks back there. Um, <laughs> don't know if they have bears around here. <laughs> I'm not sure. Be pretty untidy to run into a big fucking bear in the forest at the moment. Like I said, I don't. Um, Aside from looking at Lennon's head, I haven't really looked at what else is down around here or the layout, but there's structures all the way through the forest here. So, all kinds of channels and things. Pits and holes, there's a structure up there. So there is actually an information sign here. So this gives me a bit more of an idea now about uh, how these operated. So uh, these were the SS4 Sandal, range of 2,000 kilometers, nuclear warhead, uh, one megaton. So that puts the Hiroshima bombs and that into, they pale in comparison to that because uh, they were measured in kilotons, not megatons for a start. So you can see these, so these were on um, mobile launches. So they weren't actually uh, si uh, in missile silos or, or tubes. So they, so I understand now, so where Lennon's head is sitting, um, that metal, there's a metal ring under it so that probably would have been what the launching pad so there were four missiles housed here so i think the way it worked that's the missile silo or the missile hangar so one would have been stored in there and there are four of these around here and then each one of these would have had its corresponding firing pad so they drive the missile out um, bring it to its firing pad and there's like a metal ring on the ground i dare say that's where you know was anchored to that and that would have been where it was fired from 
<clears throat> so I think I think that's the way it works and that sort of makes sense now because I was thinking where are the actual tubes you know where are the missile tubes so there are no tubes as such so road goes on up there so like they're saying there are four of these so maybe there's one up there one here and I've got to remember to move the camera pan slowly and I think someone was saying on YouTube that shed is actually sitting on one used to be one as well now so I just wander up here and have a look a little bit annoyed that yeah there's a logging operation going on here so someone obviously owns the land now but you know, this is a tourist attraction and one of the logging people have obviously just parked a piece of their equipment right in front of the silo. It's pretty, pretty ordinary when, you know, you've got actual tourist signs here. And this has actually been funded by money from the EU. So there we go. Um, four rocket hangers staffed by army personnel with relevant knowledge. Responsible for maintaining of the required temperature in the room and regular monitoring of the missile. Rocket was placed on a cart. It required only three hours to equip the rocket with a nuclear warhead and fuel and launch it. So as you can see, that's a picture inside the hangar of two. So two missiles in each hangar. Okay. Or two rockets. And on top of the rockets they mount the warheads. Like it said, three hours and is ready to go. So there were four of these on this site. So that means, what, eight rockets? Eight warheads, potentially? So this is one of the hangars. Still got the number three on there, so this is hangar three. have a look inside but I dare say it's all just storage equipment now for for the people that are doing the logging stuff hmm so doors swing open on these metal rollers So there's no concrete leading to this one, unless it's buried uh, under the grass now. Um, and it's a slightly different type of structure to the other one. The other one had like a single door and some double doors. And this one... Yeah. Different. See if I can get a bit of light on the situation. Yeah, unfortunately, my uh. Unfortunately, my phone light doesn't work too well, but wow, what a big uh, cavernous area this is. So I'm assuming this was a storage hangar uh, for two, two missiles like the other places, but wow, just imagine standing in an area that used to contain contain nuclear missiles and you can imagine how you can imagine how secretive and sensitive this site would have been you know hidden away in the forest to 
on alert, ready to go at any given time. Wow. Like I said, this is similar to Hangar 2, same design of doors without those big funnels or vents, um, like exhaust chimneys in the, in the ceiling, same sort of sliding doors mechanism. So I do reckon like that sign said, these are where the actual rockets were stored. So two rockets in each of these, um, and then the rockets will be taken out, married up with the nuclear warhead, um, because these are just the rockets, you know, the, the fuel stage, you know, without the warheads attached and they'd be married up with the warhead wherever that took place uh, on the pad or I'm not sure and then it would come down I'd say its launching pad is down here a bit like where Lennon's head was so it would then come down to its own launching pad and off it would go and I think that other bunker that I showed inside of back down here to the right I reckon that's where the nuclear warheads were kept because it's central to all four sort of in the middle of all of them and it had the big funnels there so it would make sense that those funnels actually help uh, help to regulate the temperature inside to keep them stable keep them maintained free of moisture that sort of thing so yeah I reckon yeah, starting to understand a little bit more how it all works I think so yeah all right, just leaving the nuclear site now, the missile base. So again, just some more, more footage of. You can see the old camouflage paint still on the cement. So it had that really old style camouflage of the, you know, the colors of the forest, which worked really well. I think people actually use these for, maybe this is being used by the police or the army now for urban warfare training. Because a lot of the windows you can see are sandbagged up and they've got like gun portals. They've set up makeshift portals, you know. So I think people are actually using them for, people are actually using them for training now. So yeah. <coughs> going the other way, nice, gave a little wave, gave us a wave. So I might just pull up here and have a have a quick look, see if there's any old Soviet writing still on the walls or anything. All right. So guys, this is the entrance to the the abandoned and former secret uh, Soviet ballistic missile base in northeastern Latvia, tucked away in the forest. So this is the actual, uh, would have been the guard post or the entrance point. <coughs> so, long disused now. But yeah, you can imagine <laughs> you wouldn't be getting past this point unless you're meant to be down here or, yeah, you probably wouldn't even be on the road coming down here to start with so looks like the boom gate maybe on this side because you've got part of a, a fence post there it's a bit of metal sticking out here so maybe you had to pull in pull in on the side here or let through this side and this was just yeah not sure but more remnants of so I think there's another one of, of that block there might actually have been on here yeah that kind of makes sense there's a bit of metal sticking out there so there were two of these two of these here a smaller one off to the side <clears throat> so yeah Imagine this place was armed to the teeth. Would have been uh, full of soldiers. Because the barracks are, as you saw, the barracks are further down the road. But this would have been, you know, I'd say there would have been a fairly decent sized detachment stationed in here all the time. So 
So there have been a couple of guys sitting here, looking out the windows, checking people in and out. Office area, maybe the watch commander, maybe their office in here. Just being ex-military, I you know the way guard houses work and that, you know, they're pretty standard. So I'd probably say your watch commander would have been in here sitting behind that window so you could watch what's going on and as close by if needed. Just touch this. Just careful on these floors, guys, if you visit here because they are rotten. You can see that's just gone straight through. So unless you're putting your leg on a beam here. Yeah. Close personal protection training or adventure training or something like that because there's signs on the wall spray painted for directions and things. Um, a lot of the the old guard houses down there have got sandbags in the windows with like um, fortified positions set up, which would make me assume that they're either using it for urban assault training or adventure training, something like that. But yeah, the classic, the classic Soviet paint color schemes, dual white and brown. So yeah, more rooms. So, you know, this is probably now heading toward the back. So it's probably could have been a restroom, recreation room. Maybe in here would have been a, you know, a dining area. They have their meals. And then obviously there's got to be somewhere to, so the guys on shift would obviously have to have somewhere to sleep as well. Um, Toilets through here, toilet shower area. I would dare say I'm not really overly keen on peeking around the corner because <laughs> obviously people that visit here will probably use them for the same sort of thing that they were meant for initially, but without the piping and stuff. So yeah, I think we can do without peeking in there because I don't want to get a nasty surprise. Yeah, okay, so slightly bigger room here so toward the back there probably eating room the one that I was in like I was saying the furthest back room might have been yeah like a small kitchen area or something I'd say this is probably a dormitory in here it's a little bit larger and maybe there were bunk beds in here um, and this is where however many guards there were on shift probably would have slept So given this size, hmm, maybe had a detachment, maybe a, maybe a platoon size or something, I don't know, maybe less. I'd say at least hmm, six to ten guys on duty here for sure. Because that's pretty standard, you know, we used to have in a, a guard room probably, yeah, equivalent size to this, most of ours, and we tend to have, uh, tend to have eight to ten guys on guard over a over a 12 hour period and that'd rotate all right all right guys from the front gate of the soviet ballistic missile base hidden away in north eastern latvia in the forest i'll sign off for now cheers wow guys this is um beautiful through here um i decided i decided to go on an extra bit of an adventure turn right so hold on let me just navigate here because this is the end of a looks now wow beautiful just beautiful little villages through here you know absolutely stunning look at this you know look at that house and look at this dirt road this guy's fucking slow down you fucking idiot yeah. Actually, I don't know I 
don't know if I'll go too far on this, not with fucking idiots driving like that at that speed on that dirt road. It's going to kick up all kinds of rocks and everything, and you know, I don't want to stuff the rental car up. And this says 11 kilometers. Okay, look, what I was planning to do was cross back into Estonia and uh, get within a couple hundred meters of the Russian border. Um, to the east of Estonia so it's only 40 k's from here but it says 11 kilometers on this look I'm not going to continue 11 k's on a dirt road in this uh, brand new rental car um, even though some people treat rental cars like shit that's not me I'm not going to do it that injustice and that idiot driving past then fucking doing however fast he's going flicking up rocks and stuff that's obviously going to be the way it is if it was my own SUV or something, no issues at all. It's not a bad dirt road, this one. You just, you know, you actually sit on speed and you fly along, you don't feel the bumps. But yeah, look, I'm gonna turn around in this little cul-de-sac here and I'll head back the other way. And unfortunately, it's only 37 minutes, like I said, 41K, but I'm gonna give that a miss. Uh, I'll kick that idea into touch and uh, I'll recalibrate. I'll recalibrate and head back to head back to Riga as much as I wanted to go on that last little bit because it makes sense with the base too just to show how close you know Russia actually is to uh, these two countries so I'll just get back on the main road up here then I'm going to re whoa, 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 whoa. then I'm going to recalibrate Uh, for Riga, so yeah Damn, damn, damn. I wish there was an alternate route there I might have a look down here and just let me get back on the tar road And see if there's an alternate just make sure Google Maps didn't just Steer me down a dirt road When there's another way it could have taken me I don't think so though um, But I can't imagine it's a bit nasty a lot of trucks going past, kicking up spray. It's been an interesting drive back. Uh, geez, I'd hate to see, um, well, I'd love to come here in winter, but I mean that expression, I'd hate to see Estonia and Latvia in winter. Oh, it can be freezing, freaking cold places because it's, it's uh, a week to go in summer. And look at the temperature. See the temperature there, 11 degrees. It's, <clears throat> it's 11 degrees at 14.20. Yeah, so two o'clock in the afternoon, 11 degrees in the last week in summer in Latvia. <laughs> so if it's 11 degrees in summer, wow. Yeah, bring on winter. And winter must be outstanding here. <clears throat> All right, so I just thought I'd film a little bit of this because, yeah, this just kicked in. It's been raining on and off for the couple of days I've been here, but, yeah, today it looked sunny this morning, looked really, really nice. Didn't expect it to sort of turn into this, um, but, yeah, it has, so. Wow, guys, it's a bit mental <laughs> driving on the, driving on, like, yeah, the freeway sitting on 110 in this weather it's fucking spray and mist and shit kicking up everywhere wow man that's wet a lot of water on the road <coughs> and also there's a lot of people it's still some guy in a VW combi van went flying by his tailgate of me because we were behind a truck and as soon as I got in this overtaking lane, I overtook the truck, cut back in, but yeah, he just couldn't wait to fly past at bloody 140 k's an hour or something, so... Alright, I won't record too much, because yeah, I need both hands on the wheel in these conditions, but I just wanted to show you, like I said, this is summer. Summer in Latvia, last week of summer. 11 degrees, 2 p.m., 2.30 p.m. All right, cool. Oh, 
two hands. All right, guys, this is this cobblestone bridge thing in uh, <coughs> heading back into the center of the city. And just wow, yeah, it's like jars your bones for a kilometer or so. And if you've got an old car with old car with bad suspension, uh, it's probably not the best road to be on. Because uh, yeah, it really shakes your bones, and you got you got the tram tracks as well. Oh man, but yeah, at this time of day, did this last sort of five ten k's getting back into Riga? Yeah, it's pretty pretty painful <laughs> because um, it's busy as hell. And it's slow as hell. There's a bit of fair bit of road work going on, and yeah, so you sort of it's sort of hit and miss.